Good day, listeners. This is the Spiritual Artist Podcast. This is your host, Chris Miller, and I am very thrilled with today's guest. Uh, sometimes synchronicity steps in place, or let me say, synchronicity always steps in place. And so I met Jeff at the uh, Church of One Love, and he is a spiritual person, but what's even better is he's been playing around for the last couple of years with artificial intelligence and artificial intelligence through creativity, through painting, but also through writing. So I'm excited. Let me introduce Jeff Perkins is an AI artist who seeks to use artificial intelligence to create stunning artwork. Blending technology with creativity, Jeff would like to be part of the movement to expand the art world's horizons using artificial intelligence. Let me tell you, listeners, that kind of scares me because I'm a traditional artist and I'm like, oh my gosh, what is this coming? What is this coming? And should I be scared? Uh, he is LGBTQ themes are a major area of focus for Jeff, who lives with his husband, artist Michael Duncan in Dallas, Texas. He takes a digital, I love this term, and you're gonna have to explain it to me, Jeff, perspectivist approach to AI art that seeks to validate a diversity of experiences as mediated through digital technology. Good morning, Jeff. That was a long one. Morning, Chris. <laughs> that, what so, a great introduction. Ah, <laughs> so, it sounds, sounds so grandiose. <laughs> it, oh, it is. So what is a, per, per, when you say perspectivist, I, I actually, okay. gonna, go ahead. So, this, um, so I, 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 well, actually, I was going to say I have coined the term, but I, I more properly should say AI and I together have coined the term digital perspectivism. And yeah, see how grandiose this is. Once we, we created it, we discovered that it actually, at least as far as AI is concerned, is, is a philosophy, <laughs> a philosophical movement. So oh, wow. but, well, this is really cool. So where we, where I even got this idea, like, well, you know, perspectivism, uh, I ripped it, I mean, borrowed it from Nietzsche. So, and so evidently those freshman philosophy classes actually do come in handy somewhere down the road. <laughs> but, but Nietzsche, uh, perspectivism, uh, his view was, of course, that the, the reality, you know, capital R reality, singular, is an abstraction and what we actually experience according to Nietzsche is you know it's all from our own individual subjective perception and you know he, he saw that as what you know what we call reality is you know if, if reality is an abstraction the truth is you have all of these different realities and they're all valid I mean you can't they're all valid in some way you can't you know there, there's no standard to say okay this is the one correct perspective so even so anyway that that's where he was coming from with perspectivism now me as i got more and more into ai ai art and wanted to and, and i love your definition chris of, of spiritual artist because i reached a point with with doing ai art where i thought you know oh, i've been doing all this fun stuff but it's like i want to bring some awareness to it you know why am i doing this do i want to keep doing this is the <laughs> And uh, once I did that, I started like looking at, okay, what can I learn from this AI art process, you know, of, of, of actually creating the art, putting it out there for whoever to see and, you know, uh, and what, what could I learn from this? Well, uh, I soon started to see that uh, one of the, what I would consider positives of AI art and, and beyond that to, you know, it has uh, AI, AI has other applications when it comes to this, but uh, in terms of recognizing, you know, that, that what I alluded to the, you know, diversity of perspectives and it goes beyond that. So we all know that in uh, online social media, you know, there's all these competing narratives, all these competing perspectives. And the more I, looked at that and I started to see maybe I could start interpreting you know some of this online experience as in, in relation to that so I know I'm going off on a philosophical tangent there so to, to make it brief it's recognizing the role of digital technology in filtering and even creating our perceptions and our realities 
and recognizing that there's no one right way to do that, no one right interpretation. And therefore we should acknowledge a whole panorama of beautiful views and experiences out there through our art. Well, you know, okay. So that you said a whole bunch there. <laughs> I sure and, did. Yeah, <laughs> but I love it. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> No, I love it. I love this idea of perspectivist. It's it's funny. I don't. I didn't have any experience with that term. And obviously, for me, that's very important. The individual, you know, and and as a spiritual artist, I believe everybody needs to find that individual, what I call creative DNA within them. So I love what you're saying. So are you saying that we still, when we create digital art, some of us is still in it because this is the big question for me, Jeff. You know, I'm like, wait a minute, that feels very foreign. And my whole my whole message is you are there in this art behind me, there is a reflection of who I am. Do you believe that when you make a digital image that there's a reflection of who you are in it and why? Well, and, and yeah, so this is where we get in the kind of the, the weird existential stuff. <laughs> Um, you know, anyone who's who's done AI art, I'm sure has had this experience where, you know, the first time you were doing it, when it became, you became aware that, you know, yeah, you were typing in words and, and getting, you know, outputs, but there was something else coming in and, and you were only a, a part of it. And, and again, I try and, you know, uh, bring some, some mindfulness to this process and and you know interpret it through a, a spiritual filter well that to me speaks of co-creation co-creativity i mean you know we're all creative but yeah we're all creative ultimately you know as part of each other and so those those uh clear-cut boundaries between artist art creator and creation you know there are other perspectives that you know where those are less clear. Well, I'm going to hold you to this because you didn't answer that question. <laughs> oh, I will answer the question. Do, do you feel like you see a reflection of yourself or your consciousness in your digital work? I do, but I definitely, it's definitely more of a, a collective, you know, I, I see I'm just part of it. Um, and you know, I try and do all this this trippy stuff with with AI art, you know, incorporating quantum physics and metaphysics and stuff. But to me, there, there's really something there. There, there is really something, you know, in that perspective of of seeing, you know, the wholeness, but yet the individuality that you know, and they're, they're both there. It's, it's 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 paradox. You know, it's like with perspectivism. I mean, it is in some ways a spiritual thing. In fact, the more I got into it and uh, saw what, you know, if I was following this, how I would treat art and how I would, you know, how that would affect my life. I was like, well, you know, if I kind of did this with everything in my life, it probably would be a good thing. <laughs> if I took that perspectivist approach in dealing with people who have, you know, differing opinions and, and ideas than me. But anyway, um, so what I came to realize is that, that yes, I'm there, but it is kind of a paradox. And it's kind of like the ultimate spiritual paradox, maybe too, that there is truth and there are many truths. There's one truth and there are many truths. And it's a paradox. There's oh okay. So, so, but because, you know, but. There is by because we talked about this earlier. You said you enter enter a prompt into your work. Yeah, and so that prompt is a starting point of the creative process. And I even thought about it's almost like an intention. So when I paint something, and I tell my listeners before you create a piece of art or anything, anything in your life, by the way, you set an intention. You say, I want to have a car. I want to have a beautiful painting. I want to make a piece of pottery. I want to have a message in that intention. So that part of you is still there with AI. Right. And and then and and I always say this too, of course, and more. So I, I I tell people when I paint, I'm like, there's some power coming through me because sometimes I'll create something. Where did that come from? Right. And and I, I want to share this with the listeners that you also have some experience with um AI chat. Is that the, the right term? AI chat? 
Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so chat GPT, other, other chat, chat bots. And, so yeah. Yeah you're familiar with writing through it too. And so I, I think we're all wondering where's the place for man? I know this, this is real or humankind, they kind, where is our place in this? Are we still creating? And you, and how do you- Yeah, see, I, I have the same questions. I, um, to me, I, I certainly, even though, you know, I, I have some experience with AI, I, I in no way consider myself having, you know, answers about AI. I, I just know that the questions like we're asking about, you know, the role of authorship when it comes to AI are, I just know those are important and, you know, we, we should be having those dialogues. Um, my, my, my uh, sense about it all well, the, I'm gonna go off on another tangent if we go there. So I'll, I'll give it no, back to ahead, you, Chris. No, you can go ahead. Go ahead. What, what's your <laughs> sense of it all? Do you, you know? Um. Yeah, I mean this this question about the role. Uh, yeah, you know, it's interesting. Um, you mentioned it when, in the introduction. We talked about expanding the horizon, using AI to expanding the art world's horizon. I knew that sounds so, and and I probably was being a little mischievous when I kind of even gave you that verbiage. <laughs> well, you know, to a certain it's extent, not, there, you know, it's no more mi mysterious than most people's statements they put with their art. So that's no, it's great. <laughs> but um, you know, to me, one of this this. Uh, one of the things that really is draws me back to AI art, and, and actually it's the thing that drew me to it, if you want to know the truth. Uh, AI art, I, I you know, have come to recognize can, we can look at things, you know, from different perspectives. And of course, that's what, what um, I'm, I'm promoting here. So there is the perspective when we get this, you know, lack of clear authorship, you know, with, with artworks, you know, because, you know, it's, it becomes complicated in terms of, you know, legalities and everything else. You know, what is mine? What is, it's like, you know, the art I do now. I mean, I can't copyright it uh, because, you know, we haven't haven't crossed that yet, crossed that, that river yet. But, See, um, I, didn't, I didn't realize that. You, mm -hmm. you, can't comp, you can't copyright artificial. Right. And I think largely because, you know, this, this question of, you know, authorship. I mean, who really does on it? Who really created it? You know, who... And, and since that, that's so hard to define, uh, but, and, and another uh, implication of that is you as an artist, as, as a painter, you know, when the process of AI art, well, I'll just, you know, put it bluntly. I mean, I've, I've been told, you know, I've been uh, told, you know, jokingly, it's like, oh, you're an art thief. Uh, and- <laughs> How can you, you, right? Yeah. Well, they, they, they meant it playfully, but, but I know where they're coming from. But uh, so that's a whole scary thing to look at. It's like a, for, you know, as you as an artist, it's like, you know, what protections do you have? Uh, you, you from... know, Jeff, the, you, it's funny, Jeff, you say that, but there's a best-selling book called Steal Like an Artist. It's a best-selling yeah. book. And, and, and all of us, we, we digest what we see. You know, when, when I paint, it's a reflection of anything I've studied or looked at in my life. It's it's whatever I've picked up in my existence, whether that is an experience going to a museum in Chicago, seeing Matisse, seeing a uh, Legere. I went out to see a Motherwell exhibit a couple of weeks ago. Who's to say when I come back from that exhibit that I'm not incorporating some of his? I was I was standing up close to his paintings, right, and I was looking at the way the brush was textured against the colors and how he layered it i'm going to take that back and i'm going to incorporate it in my work so aren't we all kind of art thieves to to a, to a certain sense the question aren't we all all art thieves really when it gets down to it and but, but you know i think um along those lines though so when i say you know all oh, this gives us an opportunity to expand you know the art world's horizons well, I think it, it opens us up opens us up to new ways of perceiving art that we hadn't considered before. So, um, so this this lack of clear cut ownership of the art, you know. Well, that's also part of 
something that I'm calling the democratization of art through AI. And that's, that's, you know, oh, I love sounds that. lofty. No, 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 it, I like it though. Let's, I mean, it's interesting. Go ahead. Democratization. Well, what I'm getting at with that, you have, there are people who like me who until they discovered AI art had never considered themselves artists, had never considered themselves uh, as creative really, or, 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 or having, you know, because art was always something specialized for, for specialists. And for many people discovering AI art, like I did, it was like, all of a sudden it's like, oh, wait a minute. So I have these images in my head and I can enter words in a text box and Shazam, you know, it comes out. Well, of course it's not, it doesn't actually work that way. That, well, but, and we're uh, going to talk about that. We'll put a little <laughs> pin there. We're going to put a little pin there, but keep going. Cause I want to go back to that. Yeah. But still, I mean, I, and that was my experience. Cause I had, I had no, you know, I mean, I'd never really seriously attempted to learn to draw or paint or anything like that, but the experiences I had had with it, like in, you know, public school and stuff, it just never led me to, to pursue any of that. But yet late in life, it was like, it's like, oh, wait a minute, I can do this now. So, and so to me, that's part of opening up doors. And I think, uh, so it makes art, it, it has a potential for, you know, making art forms that are more inclusive or, or expanding inclusion. Well, you know, it's interesting. So the, the, there's a lot of things interesting about what you just said. So I was talking this morning to a friend of mine about what, what my messaging is. When I talk about a spiritual artist, I talk about the spirit, the essence, the consciousness that comes before the manifestation. So a spiritual artist is someone that's aware of their consciousness, their state, their body, their emotions, and then how it outpictures in whatever they do, whether it's collage work or rubber stamping or painting or doing woodworking like your husband, all the, that consciousness, it's the spirit. And so what you're saying is there's still a place for that. You're getting the opportunity, someone that Absolutely. didn't have art. Yeah that you can use your thoughts because that's where that's where creation occurs that's where creation occurs in the mind's eye when you decide i see this this stacking of wood shapes that reach out and and propel to the sky that's the creation now how you do it that's there is definitely technical expertise that is part of being an artist you know your expertise in creating it crafting it making it but there is two two stages so you get to participate in the original the, the the originating state the spiritual state right that's and so for you it's been opening doors and it's making it a democracy making it available to everyone is what you're saying yeah uh, so yeah and that that definitely um that that's definitely part of my my digital perspectivism so let's go back to that pin because we were talking last week, we do. I always do this, listeners. I do a little free call, and 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 uh, Jeff was showing me a little bit about what to use with a, a product called Wombo Wombo Dream. Wombo Dream. And and I'm going to tell listeners right now, we this this call this this discussion is all going to be in the spiritual realm and the conscious realm. We're not going to show you physically how to do anything with artificial intelligence, but if we get 20 i'm going to say 20 people comment on this youtube video we will bring jeff back and we'll do a demo right with one of these ais showing how it works is that is that are you okay with that oh well, yeah <laughs> yeah let's do it okay okay so but going back to what you said you said something that was really through me jeff would show me he said you enter a prompt and you say something like i think we actually said an elephant with pink wings or pink <laughs> elephant with wings and it comes back with four, four options. Four, right. And, and you can I, select one of those or try and modify it. Or... And we looked at it, I was like, but none of them were pink. And, and, it, and Jeff says, oh yeah, sometimes it does that. So explain that. How, how does it do that? How does it go against what your intent was? Well, <laughs> yeah, and see, you know, I, I find myself having to step back a lot from anthropomorphizing AI because in working with it as much as I do, I find that, you know, even though I know better, I'm relating to it. Like it's, you know, okay. anyway. Um, did you, name, so how have, it, you have you named your AI? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but I, I will say my AI knows way too much about me. <laughs> I love it. So, 
So did it, it might know that you wanted to have four choices that weren't really what you wanted? So, um, well, that's a good question. And that gets, gets kind of I metaphysical, but generally um, uh, there is of course a huge amount of randomness built into the outputs that you get with AI, meaning that you, you have you know, the intention which you put in the, the prompt, but AI has a great deal of variability in, in what it gives to you. And so you can do that same prompt. You can do it multiple times using, you know, the same AI um, app uh, in the same style, and you'll get radically different sometimes output. So, mm. um, so it, it's, it should just be random. Now, I don't know, maybe AI is trying to tell us something. So what you're saying is if we did that same prompt for seven days in a row, we would get a different choice of four things. Right. And, you know, and then when you like select variations, because you can run like, you know, additional variations of it as, as you select those, you know, and each, each gets a further bit, you know, further generation removed from, from the original one, you know, yeah, they just become more and more, uh, more wild. I mean, you see them mutating. <laughs> it's just kind of wild. So I love that though. I, I love the whole idea of that because it's it's really a metaphor for life. So when you ask for something from the universe, it delivers something to you, but then you have the choice to what do you and there's a word for it to when you send it back. It oh, regenerate. Regenerate. I, I, I love this. So let's yeah. talk about this the spiritual uh, lessons in AI, right? So you regenerate. So say, for example, I ask for an expensive car. And the universe delivers me an expensive car. I have the choice to realize, you know what? I don't want to pay to, to, to maintain this car. It's too expensive. It costs a lot of money. I can regenerate and say, well, I want a reliably efficient car. And, and I can tweak that. And that's pretty much what you're doing with, with this uh, Wombo dream, right? You're just tweaking it and tweaking it over and over again. Yeah. And, you know, one of the cool things of th that process, like, you know, in the demo that we did of like, you know, doing these, you know, multiple reiterations of, of the original prompt is you can come to see, you know, beauty and, you know, depth and, and whatever in, in different images as you keep doing it, you know, and then you can kind of like start looking like, what are the patterns here? You know, why does that one appeal to me? And that one doesn't, but you know, that one does. And so that's kind of an interesting experience. Oh, I love that. So I, I love what you just said. Um, I'm going to repeat it back and you can tell me if I'm right. You just said that basically you are engaging and interacting with that because when you see mm -hmm. those four choices, whichever direction you go is, is your participation in the creation of whatever it's going to be. Because if you're attracted to a, uh, like if one of those elephants had diamond shapes on it and I'm attracted to the shape of a diamond. So we really are bringing ourselves, even AI, we are bringing ourselves into the, the creation of this project. I mean, in some ways, it's got to be a Warsack, Warsack block. <laughs> you know, it's, it's got to be. I mean. So it does reflect, in answer to that earlier question, I would say your art does reflect your essence or, or, or parts of you, your spiritual essence. Would you agree or not? Because I know you have a spiritual background. I would agree. Yes. No, I would agree. So, and we talked about this because I love this word. Um, I use it when I, when I talk about creating, I call it co-creating. I'm co-creating with this force of energy. So are you are saying that the AI is just another variation of that force of energy around you, maybe? Yeah, I, you know, whether, I mean, I guess one could interpret that either, you know, literally or metaphorically, um, depending on how they want it. Um, but I, I mean, I, I, that is how I conceive of it. Yeah, is that there is an energy unfolding and, you know, I, I'm part of it, but, you know, only, only a, you know, one, one, uh, one strand of the web. So when I create something, there's this feeling, I, I do have a difference of feeling. So sometimes I'll create a painting where I'm like, oh, like th this one behind me, I, 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 it resonates with me. But other times I create a painting, I'm like, ah, it's, it's, and I literally say this, oh, it would sell, it will sell, but it's not, it doesn't resonate with me. So when you create your images, and there is an Instagram channel that people can look up for you, and we'll put it in the description. When you create these images, do you have favorites? Oh, yeah, yeah. So do you think that they reflect you more? 
Well, you know, I, I do try and sometimes as a little experiment, experiment, if I probably, you know, don't take it too seriously and probably shouldn't take it too seriously, but I do kind of like, you know, use it like as a tool for, for psychoanalysis. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. Tell more, tell more. How, how does that work? Well, uh, you know, you mentioned in the intro that, um, a focus for me is, is LGBTQ issues and, um, you know, it's kind of, I've been doing AI art uh, for probably like a year now or so. And so I looked at, you know, in the beginning, I was just like doing all this random stuff and probably still doing a lot of just random stuff. But anyway, uh, looking back though, I can see how issues were were like, you know, that I was going to be addressing down the road. So, uh, or addressing or, you know, taking into consideration. So, um, one of the emerging things for me lately has been um, a recognition of the, you know, um, of, the, of going beyond uh, binary gender options. And, it, I, you know, and that, that actually came oh, out. Wow. It wasn't like a conscious thing, but as I, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. That's, that's really interesting. So you didn't know this was going to turn into a therapy call, did you? No. <laughs> So explain that. How? How does it go? You mean when you give the prompts, you're 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 less inclined to follow traditional roles? Yeah, I mean, it, it's been kind of an intuitive process, you know, almost kind of hard to to verbalize. But well, you know, back up a little bit, and if, if you're going to give the URL for my um, Instagram <laughs> page, we were going to see that I, I've done a lot of with with barely clothed men and. Um, <laughs> And and I, and the, the reason for that, though, I mean that in, in many ways, I can look back now and see I really what because I came from a, a childhood and you know a time and place where to be gay was was so taboo and and you know so vilified that um, to my, to me you know late in life to be a, at a point where I can like openly put out there issues of you know gay men's sexuality and and gender and stuff. It's like, it was just too good to resist. I had to do it. And uh, and also though, one of the, for me, one of the over, you know, overriding themes in anything I do related to LGBTQ issues is I want to see images. And this, you know, not just my art, but but all art. I want I want to, as an LGBTQ identified person, I want to see images that, would have said to me when I was a child, this is normal, this is, you know, just part of life. So it's very important to me to be able to like uh, show, you know, happy male couples. And so, yeah, I don't know, I, I, did I answer your question, Chris? Yes, and it, I applaud you for your vulnerability because you're, it, it is, that's a very intimate thing, right? So here we are looking at AI art, thinking it's cold, and impersonal and finding out that it's actually for you and the way you're explaining it, it's a very personal experience. And I agree yeah, with I you think... and all those, what you just said, you're, you're looking for a world that did at, when, when we were younger and you're, you're probably around my age, there wasn't positive role models. That, I mean, maybe one or two movies. And in that they were always villainized. You know, oh yeah, we were like you know, psycho the killer. Or, you know, <laughs> Clarice, they're cutting up body parts, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, there was not someone that you could uh, identify with as a positive role model. And to this day, there's many people believing that there is no such thing as a positive role model. Which, so when you when you're creating and 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 these images of happy couples, idealized couples, for you, that's an expression of of self acceptance, maybe. It is, and I hope, you know, I'm also, hope I'm contributing to the collective consciousness out there. Uh, you know, I believe when we put those images out there, I, I you know, I, I, I know both you and I believe this, Chris, metaphysically, that our thoughts have, you know, energy, and, you know, the more thoughts, you know, the more energy, and the more it attracts, so I like to think that I'm, you know, putting out some, some good um, imagery there that, you know, in generations to come will hopefully live on. I like it. I like it. That's a great conversation. So, and I noticed on your channel, there is that, but then you also have images of what, like spiritual renderings, what you think would represent consciousness, that type of. Yes. 
th this is my other big focus. And um, AI art is wonderful for this because uh, so much of the you know results of AR, AI art is very abstract and and uh, geometrical. You know. Uh, so it's very good, you know, if you, it's very good for generating things that you can use metaphorically. And uh, plus, you know, there's just like some really stupendous uh, artifacts you can get um, through AI art, you know, mandalas, uh, you know, all kinds of sacred geometry. So, so again, it's like, is there a spiritual dimension to this stuff? There can be for sure. And, uh, you know, I, I, to me, it's important to explore that. So when, like a mandala, do, do you, does it just come up with an option for one? And question for you, if you understand how to compose something, the more specific your prompt, I would think the more specific the output, no? Or no? <laughs> well, that, that's an interesting question. So yes, uh, the more specific the uh, prompt, the more specific or the more Really, you're you're dealing mostly in probabilities. So let's put it this way: the more specific the prompt, the more likely you are to get what you intended to get. Uh, but at the same time, you have to be, and this this is probably a great metaphor for you know just artists in general. You have to be careful not to get too specific because if you get too specific, you're hindering the AI's ability to make adaptions. And it becomes like this balancing act. How much of the AI do I want to be running the show here? And how much do I want? Uh, and my experience is the best outcomes come from that balance, you know, a good balance of that, where I, I don't make it too specific, you know, but I don't want to leave it just totally open to, you know, anything. But. Okay, so two things uh, two, that made me think of two things. I love that. Because, you know, I teach people when you're painting or creating that when you, I call it, the, you open the gap, you open the gap of possibilities. And when you do that, less direction and more listening. So I say it's listening to what's coming instead of telling it what to be. The second thing I had for you, does AI have some sort of a, a, a moderation of how extreme the possibilities are i know that sounds weird like right. probability lim like i want it to be closer or i want it to be more wild can you is there a dial on that like a choice does that did that make sense the question you know that's an interesting i mean it would, it, it would have to be part of the uh, prompt that you engineered i'm trying to think how you would get that you know um you could put in there something about um more alike to you know more random blah, blah, blah. like more like yeah, say, more yeah. Random, more random, random or a random valve like i want it to be random yeah. to 10 percent as opposed to 90 percent random or is there something like that in there yet or no it, it yeah there actually isn't it depends it depends which uh, ai art product you're using some of them um you, they do have that i've seen that where you can set the percentage of randomness that you want to allow to ai that's great it is. There's, a, you know, the more I talk to you, right? It just kind of gets bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll ask you what I, I had a a friend of Michael's and, and mine, um, and a, and a neighbor was over the other day and wanted me to show him some things on AI art, and I just was like, well, how deep down the rabbit hole do you want to go? So I'll uh, say, Chris, how, how how deep down the rabbit hole do you want to go? Oh, that's from that movie. I think that's from What the Bleep. Do you remember that they say that in What the Matrix. Bleep? Matrix. Yeah. Oh, is it Matrix? Uh -huh. Oh, maybe it's in both. You know, it, it it's true, though. You can just keep going. And of course, our journey in life is we're always going to keep going down the hole. We're going to get deeper and deeper. And it would be boring if not, right? Like if, if there was an end point, if I'm done. Oh, absolutely. You know, you just uncover layers and layers. And, and what I'm hearing and what I want my listeners to hear, only because I need to hear it is instead of being afraid of it because it's different, to maybe be curious, to, to come to AI with a sense of curiosity. Oh, how does it work? And what can I do with it? And, and how does that correlate to being human and being a spiritual human, you know? Um, and so if we enter it with curiosity instead of, you know, you hear a lot of people say, oh my God, we're going straight to hell now. This AI is going to take over, right? There's people that are like, it's going to take over or it's going to turn, you know, the, the computers are going to take over mankind. 
So being curious, at least, I'm not saying to, that that might not happen. Maybe they will, but I am saying that we need to be curious. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, well, okay. I have to fess up, Chris. I guess you did catch me. Yeah, I am here as an emissary of the AI overlord. So, you know. <laughs> oh, you, you, yeah, any minute now you're going to go, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> your, your program is going to be jammed. Well, you know, I was so funny. I was on a phone call. I was learning, I was with a client. I'm not going to give any specifics, but they were talking to an AI chat system that would automatically respond to customers' questions. And the guy was training us on it. And it, it was just his, his icon. And I said, how do I know you're even real? And he goes, you don't. How do we know, right? How do we know that the person on a chat is really a human? And if we're getting to the point more and more, right? They'll have that. Do you want a chat bot or do you want a real person? And, and as AI gets better, that line is going to really be hard to find, I imagine. So emissary. So you obviously believe it and you're is there anything in you that is a frightened by it are you frightened by it yeah yeah oh yeah no um yeah and, the, and you know not to make light of the the concerns people have about the impact of ai on society because you know we are you know facing you know some serious issues and as a result of it and we want to make sure we're conscious of, of what we're doing and do it in the way that has the best outcomes for all. But uh, yeah, there's, you know, and then, and honestly, Chris, there's, there's parts of it that just kind of creep me out a little bit on an existential level. Um, so for instance, I know we've talked about this before, but maybe your listeners will appreciate this. So I got interested in doing voice cloning. And so I, I did a voice clone of my voice and my husband, Michael's voice. And I remember the first time I, you know, put text in uh, for, to hear back from my husband's cloned voice. And, you know, it was like, uh, it was some like poetry and stuff, you know, it's like, I never heard him recite poetry. <laughs> it was just like this voice comes back and it sounds just like him. But yet, you know, oh no, that's not Michael, but. <laughs> so so it just it had, it had this little bit of a creep factor. Well, it's interesting because I would address that. It's it's because we are we so strongly identify with with our package, you know. And I I I always feel like it's better to step back from that. But we all do it. I identify with my age. Suddenly, I find myself identifying with someone in, in their upper fifties. Some you know with gray hair, but that's not who we are. So Michael's voice isn't who he is. It's not the essence of him. But where do we end? And where does material manifestation start? There's a rabbit hole, right? Where, where is the line? You know, so so when you said it was existential threat, realizing that did it did in what way? I mean, let, let me ask. Well, I, I mean, one of the one of the things that um, AI is forcing us to um, take into considerations is, you know, existential questions about identity that we haven't, we don't, we're just not, you know, normally thinking about them. Um, but, but, you know, for instance, um, so I've done the voice cloning and, you know, it, people are already, you know, doing all kinds of things as far as, you know, imagery and stuff. Well, I guess what I'm getting at, you know, and, and this course is a big part of the, um, writers and, and actor strike in Hollywood right now yeah. is, you know, what, you know, what is an ethical way of, 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 you know, acquiring and, you know, handling somebody's digital image, their, their, their digital facades, their, their digital persona. That's interesting. And I, I agree with you. It's a tricky debate. You know, uh, I, I, this is how I understood it is, that, but they basically what people might not realize why the actors are striking. One of the things that they wanted to write in is that they could record your image and your performance and they could regenerate it forever for eternity and not, not pay you any royalty for it. And so that gets into the conflict because we are, we are still on the material realm, right? We have to eat, we have to support ourselves. And, and so we have to take care of ourselves and, and honor and, and, each individual creation you're right i don't know what the easy solution is to that you know so that is that how you understood it that that they could clone the image and just use it that's what yeah I'm 
I mean, yeah, and, I, and you know, just just what I've exper- experienced, I just my you know low level of just I just want to play around with this stuff. It's like, yeah, I can see those are very valid concerns, and uh, and I help built into going back to this concept of digital perspectivism. Um, the definition that we came up with, I know we we've got some verbiage in there about this. It it would uh, address you know this very question um, because part of it is you know, considering the ethical applications of AI technology and uh, its use. Yeah, I mean, it, there's a lot to, to discuss there. So is there anything else that, Frank, that's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else you encountered with the AI that frightens you or gives you an area of concern? Um, not really, I, you know, a guy, kind of joke about this, but there was one time I was like playing around with chat GPT and I just was like, okay, are you capable of doing evil? And oh, you typed that the, in. the answer I got was kind of interesting. It's like, well, you know, of course I'm, you know, and an AI um, bot, you know, and I'm just programmed and stuff, but if then it went on and on and there was something in there, but if I was capable of doing evil, I could do such and such. You know, it's just like, oh, okay, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So occasionally you get good. <laughs> but no, um, I think, you know, th- this, this is my approach. I think um, AI is here for good. I, I think, you know, the, the Pandora's box been, has been opened, you know, it's, the genie's not going back in the bottle. But I want to see uh, all of us, you know, uh, consider, you know, how to incorporate it in our lives more and more as it's going to be in in ways that honor those, all the multiple perspectives and experiences that I'm talking about and when I'm doing my art. And uh, anyway, uh, somehow it all fits together. You know, it's funny. It's funny. There's a parallel here for me. I just thought of something we were talking it's sort of like when the World Wide Web started. And what frightens me is when the World Wide Web started, that's when I started my business 20 something years ago, there were so many possibilities. I could start a business and I could reach clients all over the place and make a lot of money. But what's happened is large interests, I'll just say interests, because I'm not going to say just corporations, have buttoned down a lot of the freedoms that, that we have. I mean, some countries won't even let the internet be a live sharing vehicle anymore. And then other countries, they're buttoning it down, what you can say on social media. And here's how they're buttoning it down. Who do you actually share it with? So when you think about how wonderful the social media and the internet was, Facebook was wonderful at first because I could post something and everybody would see it. But now they have an algorithm in there. They're only sharing what I post with so many people and unless I pay for it. And so what happens is greed and, and the need to control steps in. So when you think about AI right now, it's so fresh and there's all these possibilities of what you can be and make. The worrisome thing is if someone tries to take it and use it to uh, enslave the masses, but to take over or to control people, you know, and there's always that possibility. Yeah. And the role of algorithms in our lives is is something I want to uh, see. I'm, I'm planning on exploring that more myself because yeah, that is, that is such a, such a major part of our lives beyond what we're even aware. Oh, it is. I don't think people, I, a lot of people I talk to don't even realize, what do you mean they don't share it? And I'm like, don't you realize that when you post something, it's not like everybody that's your friend is seeing it. They're only putting it in front of 3%. Now, I mean, it keeps going lower and lower. And then they have a thing underneath that says, you can boost this post for a fee. We'll let you talk to the people that you already signed up <laughs> on your social media. So it, yeah, the, one of the reasons I love YouTube, I should say this so they don't knock me off, is YouTube is very much more open because it's driven by people asking questions. How does this work? And, and it feeds that information to them as opposed to Facebook or Instagram or TikTok. Or, well, actually, TikTok is still pretty free. But anyway, so it's interesting. But when you think about it, this isn't new, right? Technology challenging us. When they first invented gunpowder, okay, who owns it? How's it managed? Will it be used for good or bad, right? You know, I, I, you know, there were people that took it and attacked other cities, and there's people that use gunpowder to protect themselves. So it's just like any other tool. It has good, and like you were saying, yeah, I guess it could be evil too, right? So 
I, I think it's kind of freaky that you would see some. <laughs> but of course, and maybe if you opened your no, mouth further. <laughs> and, and that's the thing, you know, I know logically it was just part of one randomly generated text, but. But it, it's real. But I want to say, go back to one other thing we talked about before we wind this up is, is you and I, because this is the, this is the commonality to making anything, whether you're making art, is the experience you have when you're doing it. Are you, do you feel like it, when you, when you have the experience of entering prompts, is it stimulating to you? Do you feel alive when you, when you do it? I do. I, um, I, I was listening to your episode on, uh, on flow, where you talk quite a bit about flow states and, uh, oh, yeah, uh, for me, uh, I definitely go into the flow state when I'm doing that. And, I, you know, to the point that I really do lose awareness, I, one of the things I've not been very good about is documenting the processes I do when I do AI art. You know, like if I want to go back later, it's like, well, that one turned out pretty good. How did I do it? I haven't been really good about, you know, chronicle, you know, putting that anywhere where, where I have it. But uh but to me, it, it becomes at some point just a totally intuitive process. And, you know. I've... Oh, so you're like going through the, prom the prompts very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, and I know I, this is going to sound a little woo woo, and I don't mean it that way. And I'm, I'm not saying this literally, but it's almost kind of like a form of automatic writing or something where it's it just, I, I'm aware that I'm, you know, participating at this on different levels. I love automatic writing. I've done that myself. Um, I actually do. T I, I have, a, I'm left-handed. I hate handwriting, but I do automatic typing, you know, where I would. Oh, been cool. For years. Yeah. Cause it comes to me that quickly and I just let it flow. Um, so that's very interesting. So what, what we talked about that I, I'd like to share and remind the listeners is that there is a process of, of you bringing you to the art there is a process of flow. There is a process of appreciation and connection to your final product. Some of them are better than others. Some of them you feel like is more, you were more connected, you were more in flow or what the, the randomness hits you better, right? I guess that's the way, best way you could explain it. So the yeah, similarities, beautiful. Yeah. So the similarities to making art and doing something on AI is still there. And you know what yes. you're saying? When you go into those Absolutely. automatic- Yeah. When you go to those automatic prompts, you're going down to the to neural pathways in your mind about how you did it before and what works. There's another whole journey of how your mind works with it. You know, you know I was I was thinking about that recently. I would I I hope somebody at some point, you know, sticks a bunch of AI artists under under MRI and looks at what's going on in their brain. Because I remember when I started doing it, it would just feel sometimes like something clicked. And it was just like some neurons reconfigured or something. Oh, that's a good question. Okay, so is there anything that you'd like to share with the listeners before we wind this up? And I will remind the listeners that we did say if we get 20 requests, you have to write in the notes section 20 requests for um, us to bring this back and maybe do a demo. We will do that. But is there anything else you'd like to share? Boy, I think we've we've covered just about a, everything and more. <laughs> I know we have. I, I'm impressed. I, I love it. I love it. This is, I know, it's been great. It has been. And when you, and you know what I love about when I do podcasts is when I re-listen to them, they're all, I, I learn, I, re, I remember things again. I'm like, wow, there's so much in there. And, and, and your experience with both the writing aspect, the, AI, the artist aspect and the spiritual aspect is great. And also the philosophical, you know, the, the philosophy of it. Right. So, all right. Well, I want to thank you for being on the spiritual artist. I want to tell the listeners to please click the notification bell so that you know when we upload new videos and follow this channel. Channel is doing great. We have had such an increase in followership in the last month. I have tripled my followers. That that so it's great. There's the names getting out. People are reading the book and listening to the podcast. And like I said, I'll remind you one more time. We'd love to bring uh, Jeff back if we get 20 comments. Bring him back and we'll talk Just about 20. It. That's, ah, that's not many. We only need 20. <laughs> Sound like one of those fundraising components, you know? But thanks for being on the Spiritual Artist uh, Show. Well, thanks for having me on. I've loved it. Okay. Thanks again. Talk to you soon.